All right, call this meeting to order. Uh, we'd like to welcome everyone, ladies and gentlemen, uh, to this meeting. And as Chairman Keesling would say, we want to welcome our millions of viewers out there across the United States. <laughs> so, so with that, with that said, welcome. And with the clerk, would please take the roll. Representatives Alexander, Beck, Here. Bricken, Here. Butler, Carringer, Chisholm, Here. Dixie, Haston, Holsclaw, Hurt. Jernigan, Johnson, here. Leatherwood, Littleton, McCallman, Miller, here. Powell, Powers, here. Rudder, <laughs> Terry, Vice Chairman Eldridge, here. Chairman Kiesling, Mr. Chairman, you have a quorum. Thank you. Um, first off, does any of the members have any personal orders? Uh, Chairman Bricken. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. In honor of our chairman who's not here today, I think we have to have, you know, a day in history. So I hope everyone has something they've looked up. But the day, I guess 23 years ago today, one of the greatest sporting achievements occurred in our country by the U.S. amateur hockey team in beating the professional Russian team on the miracles, on the ice, and the, the Winter Olympics. So anyway, that day in history. <laughs> thank, thank you, Chairman Bricken. Uh, uh, Representative Carringer. <laughs> thank you, Chairman. I can add to what happened 65 years ago, and that that was my mother-in-law was blessed with a wonderful uh her first child, which was my husband, Michael Carriger. So happy birthday. And I I think uh, my mother-in-law and God above for blessing us with him. He's a blessing every day. So. Thank you. Representative. Okay. Since it's played this day in history game. So today, 79 years ago, uh, my mother-in-law was born. Today's her would be her 79th birthday, but she passed away in 2015. 2015. So I'd like to wish her a happy heavenly birthday. Thank you, Representative Dixie. Right. Uh, Representative Cal McCallman. Well, today in 1997, Dolly the cloned sheep was born. So there's your random fact for the day. <laughs> <laughs> Chairman Jarnigan. Well, it's um, President's Day was um, what we celebrated on Monday, but it is actually George Washington's birthday today. Right, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? So Chairman Keesling's got some competition, I believe, on, on this day in history. So, so uh, all right. If there's no one else with personal orders, uh, we'll, we'll, we do have a calendar. Uh, first on the agenda is House Bill 374 by Speaker Marsh, and we're going to roll that one three spots. Uh, second up is uh, House Bill 522 by Chairman Russell. Second. Chairman Russell, you're recognized on your bill. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Committee. House Bill 522 authorizes the Tennessee Highway Patrol that is assigned a protective detail to utilize their uh, vehicles and emergency equipment if need to be in uh, performing their duties. It doesn't change anything that they're doing. It just allows them to do it in case there's a wreck and suit civilly. It just clarifies in the law that they have the authority to do what they're already doing. All right. So any questions for Chairman Russell? Any, any, okay. Questions been called. Uh, we're voting on House Bill 522. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? The ayes, the ayes have it. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you all. Goes to calendar and rules, sir. Thank you. Um, you may go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Um, next up is House Bill 452 by Chairman Russell. We have a motion and a second. Chairman Russell, I believe this one has an amendment. Is that correct? 
Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, I show 003915. Okay, that's what we have, and it rewrites the bill. Is that also correct? It does. Okay, if we would, if the, the committee would like, we'll go ahead and put the amendment on the bill. We have a motion and a second. All in favor of adding amendment 3915 to House Bill 452, please say aye. Uh, and any opposed? The ayes have it. You're, you're, you have the amendment on your bill. And if you would, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Committee. House Bill 452 requires a prisoner of a county workhouse or jail who is released from custody on work release or otherwise allowed to leave the grounds of the county workhouse or jail for employment or to perform work in the community, whether paid or unpaid, to use an electronic monitoring device at all times when the prisoner is not on the grounds of the county workhouse or jail, requires the employer or the person utilizing the prisoner for work to pay the cost of the electronic monitoring device. And there are two ex exceptions, and that is if they're supervised by an armed law enforcement officer or correction officer and remains in direct sight of an armed law enforcement officer or corrections officer. Okay, you've heard the explanation of the bill. Is there any questions for Chairman Russell? Uh, Representative Dixie. Did Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Did, uh, to the sponsor, does this uh, apply if they have a furlough as well? I would say if they leave the grounds, <laughs> it would apply, but it's for work detail, like a trustee leaving to do some sort of work for a... Um, Nonprofit or anything like that. We can ask legal to clarify that if we need to. But Chairman Dixie, or if we could. All right, we'll go out of session and hear from legal. Representative Dixie, would you mind repeating the question, please? Uh, does this apply to a furlough? I think there's some opportunities. Sometimes I've seen it when they're in jail. I've seen a, a prisoner or an inmate be let out on a furlough for like a several days to go get some medical work done or dental work done. And I was just wondering, does this apply too? Because they'll be leaving the actual grounds what they have to have an electronic monitor as well. Chairman Russell. Oh, legal. Oh, legal. I'm sorry. Thank you, Matt Mundy from legal. I think the answer to the question would be, it depends on what the purpose of the furlough is for. So what the bill says is that a person who's released from custody on work release or otherwise allowed to leave the grounds of the county workhouse or jail for employment or to perform work in the community, whether paid or unpaid. So if, if the furlough was for work or for community service or something like that, I think it would be, it would fall under that, this bill. Okay, any other questions for legal? We'll go back in session. Is there any other discussion or questions for Chairman Rudd? Okay, Representative Beck. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Is this going to hinder uh, the work release or the community work that the uh, inmates do for the sheriff, uh, uh, sheriff's department? From what I understand, it shouldn't. The work release program is already doing most of this, and the uh, ankle monitors are only like $4 a day for that, and it comes out of the... Um, trustees checks automatically and then like if it's a nonprofit, they would just have to come up with a four dollars a day so it shouldn't and then if it's a situation where the sheriff himself wants to send or herself wants to send a trustee out they can send a guard or corrections officer or deputy to get go as long as they're armed and inside of the uh, officer they can still do it uh, representative bay so our sheriffs are good with this is what you're saying <laughs> yes sir they are Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Any any other questions for Chairman Russell? Uh, Question on the bill. Questions been called on the bill. We're voting on House Bill 452. It, uh, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? The ayes have it. Your bill moves on to finance, ways, and means, Chairman. Thank you. And next up, we have eight, uh, HJR 23 by mm -hmm. Chairman Russell. Motion. We have a motion and a second. Uh, Chairman Russell, you're recognized. Thank you, um, Mr. Chairman and Committee. HJR 23 just simply makes the pumpkin pie as a symbol of the state of Tennessee, and it's an honorary title for two years. <laughs> so thank, you, thank you, Chairman. Uh, 
<laughs> Representative Powell, I believe your hand went up. Uh, thank you. I have a question for the sponsor. Um, yes, is this plain pumpkin pie, whipped cream, or Cool Whip? And do you have a preference? We thought about doing the whipped cream, but I didn't get the memo in time to get it submitted and before the 24-hour deadline to file the amendment. So we're just going to do a plain pumpkin pie this year. So. Do, do you want time to put an amendment on the bill by any chance? <laughs> I, I think I may run it again in two years and maybe do the uh, whipped cream, but I don't know. I just want to make pumpkin pies great again. What about it? Uh, Chairman Holtzclaw, I believe your hand was up there. Where did this idea originate from? That's a good question. It's Madisonville Intermediate School back home, and they want to teach the kids how the process of legislation works, and they submitted it to me, and that's how I came about running it. So you couldn't come up with this idea on your own? No, I, 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 I didn't, but uh, this is only my fifth year, so give me another you know, couple of years and I'll be able to do better. Thank you, Representative. <laughs> thank you. Uh, Chairman Jarnigan, Yo, thank you. Uh, this sunsets in two years, is that right? It is. It's an honorary title for just the 113th General well, Assembly. What, what are we going to do after that? Probably strawberry. Okay, all right. Very well. <laughs> Chairman Powers. Yes, I just wanted to know, uh, what is the current state pie of Tennessee? Hopefully it's fixing to be pumpkin, but I don't know what it is now. <laughs> so there, there's not one right now? I, I'm no not key sure. Lime I, don't, I, don't, I don't think they are. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank, thank you, uh, uh, Representative Chisholm. Thank you, Chairman. To the sponsor, would you be willing to do an amendment to make it a sweet potato pie instead of a pumpkin pie? I wonder if we could do a dual pie. <clears throat> yeah. Right. Negotiation. Rep 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 Pardon? Who called who call question? McCollum, did you call question? No, we just had somebody call the question twice. Oh. The question has been called on the bill. Uh, thankfully. Uh, <laughs> all in favor of HJR 23, please say aye. aye. Any opposed? The ayes have it. You move on to calendar and rules, and good luck. And Chairman Keesley is going to be announcing We're, this in a year or two that we passed this today in today in history. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. All right, we're we're gonna we're gonna move back to we're gonna move back to item number one, House Bill three seventy four by Speaker Marsh. We have a motion and a second. Speaker, you're ready to to go. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This bill is from the Secretary of State's office, and it deals with transferring oversight of the fantasy sports from the Secretary of State's office to the Sports Wagering Advisory Council. With the passage of the Sports Gaming Act, it makes sense to move the regulatory oversight of fantasy sports to the Sports Wagering Council to take advantage of efficiencies and, and to centralize regulation of sports wagering. And last week in the subcommittee, we were asked some questions about how much money this is taking in, and I do have the answers today. I'd like to give you that very quickly. For the calendar year 2022, Tennesseans wagered $3.85 billion on online sports wagering. The total privilege tax collected was $68 million. By statute, this, distribu this is distributed 80% to education, that provides for the HOPE scholarship, 15% to local governments for infrastructure projects, and 5% to the Department of Mental Health for responsible gaming initiatives. And we have, additionally, we have 13 licensed sports book operators, and they pay an annual fee of $750,000 for their license. So this is big money that we're dealing with in the state. So with that, I'll answer any questions. All right. You've heard the explanations. Is any questions for Speaker Marsh? Uh, Chairman Carringer. Thank you, Chairman. I don't have a question, but I just wanted to ask you, would you care to send um, 
those results that you just read, st statistics and all to, to all of us. I will. You know, the, Thank they you. sent it to me, and I'll be glad to just forward that to Thank the whole you. committee. I'll get them to do it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any other representative back? Thank you. And Speaker Marsh, the, did you say the fantasy um, sports total also? The fantasy sports. It's much see. less. I just much thought it less, was interesting. Yes. yes, it's like 218,000 they collected last year. Yes, they sent that to me after a subcommittee and I. Just wanted everyone to know. Thank and you. Sixty-four of that goes. Two hundred eighteen thousand goes to general fund. Sixty-four to the counties. Thirty-two thousand to fantasy sports fund, and six six thousand four hundred dollars to the Department of Revenue for administration. So, both of them together is a lot of money. Fantastic. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you, Chairman Holtzclaw. Thank you, Chairman. I appreciate you bringing this bill, and they selected the right person to deal with big money for sure. Thank you, Chairman Holtzclaw. I appreciate your kind words. <laughs> <laughs> Questions, question has been called on the bill. Uh, we're voting on House Bill 374. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Any opposed? The ayes have it. You move on out to GovOps. Thank you. Uh, next up, we have item number five, House Bill 17 by Chairman Faison. We, we have a motion and a second. <laughs> Chairman Faison, you're recognized. Thank you for the reluctance of the motion and the second. <laughs> Committee, if you remember, a year ago we passed the Silver Alert Bill. Uh, over a thousand Tennesseans have been found and saved from that. This year we would like to make Silver Alert be the month of May, just as a state of Tennessee, just remembering those who have family and friends who are struggling with dementia or Alzheimer's, uh, bringing awareness to us. So that's all this does. You've heard the explanation. Is there any questions for Chairman Faison? We have one, uh, Representative Dixie. Uh, just a quick question. I see that it's being held on the desk in the Senate. Is there a reason for that? Just till we got it moving here. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Chairman Holtzclaw. Appreciate that. Thank you, Chairman. And it is a great bill and it's working. And I'm assuming they selected you because you're getting close to those silver years or. <laughs> is there any other comments for the chairman? I see none. Where Mr. Chairman, would you like for me to answer? Falling in the old man's footsteps. He's having uh, a hard time remembering my name right now. So there's that. I'm, I'm 65. I don't want to even go there. <laughs> um, all right. Any, any further comment or questions? We're voting on House Bill 17. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Any opposed? The ayes have it. You move on to calendar and rules, sir. Next up is item number six, House Bill 948 by Chairman Boyd. We have a motion and a second. Chairman, you're ready to go. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, committee, and, and members. Uh, if you've ever lived in an area that experienced a tornado or a or an ice storm or have, have been without electricity for some time, you have seen the work that uh, Tennessee's electrical line workers do and the impact they have in restoring power and, and just, just – uh, being our backstop against uh, some of these failures in critical infrastructure. And so across this country, there are many states and, and many cities and counties that uh, on the uh, second Monday in April will we'll have a uh, line worker appreciation day. And so what this bill seeks to do is to designate the second Monday in April of each year as Tennessee line worker appreciation day. And so this would not uh, become a legal holiday, uh, as is defined in St Tennessee statute, it would just designate the second Monday in April each year as that day. Mr. Chairman, I'll take any questions. All right. You've heard the explanation. Are there any questions for Chairman Boyd? Questions been called on the bill. We're voting on House Bill 948. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Any opposed? The ayes have it. And you move on out to calendar and rules, sir. Thank you, Chairman and Committee. Thank you.
Next up is item number seven, House Bill 47 by Chairman Doggett. We have a motion and a second. To, uh, you're, you're ready, Chairman. Well, good morning, everyone. It's good to see you all. I'm prepared for some questions here from this gentleman on the front row, I'm sure. But uh, I've got with me uh, watching this morning is Miss Leanna Dareberry's class. She's a school teacher in Mount Pleasant uh, school system there in Murray County. She is a constituent of mine, and she is the one that brought the idea for this bill to me. And so her class is watching uh, right now with us. But members in 1987, the 95th General Assembly adopted the motto of the state is agriculture and commerce. These words that first appeared on the state seal introduced during Governor Brownlow's administration back in 1869, do not fully capture the spirit of Tennessee. When people think of the 16th state, undoubtedly, a reference to the volunteers is made. Unofficially, we are known across the country as the volunteer state. This moniker led to the mascot of our state's university, but it did not begin in the annals of sports history. In 1812, 3,500 Tennessee men answered the call for volunteers and mustered at Camp Blunt down in Fayetteville during the Red Stick Rebellion and then later against the, the British in the Battle of New Orleans during the War of 1812. During the War of 1812, it was estimated that some 20,000 Tennesseans were present. President James K. Polk called for 2,600 Tennessee volunteers a few years later during the Mexican-American War, and guess what? Some 30,000 Tennesseans answered the call. Tennesseans also went to aid in Texas back in 1835 to help fight for the Texas War of Independence. Time and time again, over the 246 years of our state's glorious history, Tennesseans have willingly gone forth to help their neighbors both near and far in times of war and in times of natural disaster. It is that willingness to serve that others that has earned Tennesseans the nickname of the volunteers. And today I stand before you to propose an additional state motto. Send me to reflect the heart of the people of this great state. In Isaiah chapter 6 verse 8 we could read, And I hear the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Then I said, here I am, send me. This piece of scripture shows how God wants willing volunteers in his service. And with Isaiah, with a grateful, enthusiastic heart, he doesn't hesitate in taking the opportunity when he says, here I am, send me. This is the spirit of Tennessee. When the rally cry for help in the battle is raised, it's Tennesseans who answer. When hurricanes destroy our country's coasts, it's Tennesseans who lend a helping hand. When tornadoes and floods wreak havoc here in our own communities, it's Tennesseans who pitch in. We are all Tennessee volunteers, but when the call is raised, whom shall I send? I'm hoping that you will help me Make the answer, send me. So, Mr. Chairman, I stand ready for any questions or comments from the committee. Yeah. Chair, Chairman Powell. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, yes, in, in subcommittee, I, I requested that you add send my mother-in-law on this bill. <laughs> and uh, it, I do not see it where it's been added. <laughs> Chair, Chairman Doggett, <laughs> legal. <laughs> I think I think the quick. I do have a Chairman Journey. I have a real. I, I think my question is more really. serious question. This this is a. It's not in conjunction with the current motto. It's a separate motto. Is that right? Yes, sir. That is correct. Okay. It, it is just an additional motto. All right. Thank you. Chairman Holt's claw. Well, I can't top that. Um, 
but we appreciate you bringing this and it is true i just come from the alamo and if you look on the people that died there's as many tennesseans as there are texans so we are truly a volunteer send me kind of state mm -hmm. and that speaks well and i'm glad that you're third graders is that what you I don't know what grade they're in, but I just know they're in school. school oh. age, yeah. All right. We appreciate them watching. And you did, did they write that presentation for you? They helped. Uh, thank you, sir. <laughs> thank you all. I believe the question was called a little earlier. So uh, without objection, we're voting on House Bill 47. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. aye. Any opposed? The eyes have it. You move on out to calendar and rules, sir. Thank you all so much. Okay. It takes us to item number eight, House Bill 870. That has been rolled for two weeks. Next up is item number nine, House Bill 1018 by Chairman Grills. We have a motion and a second. And Chairman, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And that was quite the, uh, the watchful event right there. Chairman Powers, that's and and then watch uh, Representative Powell. You must be in the view of the camera. He still faced this. <laughs> uh, this bill cleans up several old and outdated terms uh, that the uh, code has related to the Tennessee w, uh, TWRA. This bill makes changes to the non-resident fee structure uh, with the information required and provided by not by a non-resident, and these fees are set by rule. Uh, this bill deletes uh, provisions currently in law that allows the agency to regulate krill limits on private lakes. This bill deletes um, the fee for slat baskets as that fee is set by rule. Relative to Real Foot Lake, and th which is in my district, this, deal, uh, this, uh, this bill deletes antiquated provisions of law that presumes that vessels employed in the ordinary purpose of commerce are steam and sail. Finally, the bill deletes the section of code that is still referred to taking a, of wildlife as being a privilege and not a constitutional right. It's pretty much a cleanup bill that was given to me or was brought by a TWRA. If there's any questions to be asked, uh, TWRA has representatives here that can answer those or I'll do my best, but I'll renew my motion. Right. Is there any questions for Chairman Grills? Questions been called on the bill. We're voting on House Bill 1018. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Uh, the ayes have it. You move on out to calendar and rules, sir. Next, next on our agenda is House Bill 182 by Chairman Whitson. We have a motion. We have a motion and a second. Chairman, you're ready to go, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and fabulous seeing you up there in the chairman's seat. And uh, committee, uh, I know I'm out of order, but uh, Mr. Chairman and committee, I'd like to introduce a constituent that's uh, joining me today on the House uh, as we go up through the, the legislative day, and that's Erin Jones. She's a junior at Battleground Academy uh, in Franklin. Her parents are constituents and good friends of ours. And Aaron's Chairman. Chairman Whitson, before we continue on, I do see an amendment on your on your bill. Is that correct, sir? Yes, Mr. Chairman, uh, there is. Um, it the amendment uh, makes a technical correction, but also it re, uh, replaces section one and two. Motion. We have a motion, a second on the amendment. All in favor of adding the amendment, uh, please say aye. aye. Any opposed? The Amendment goes on your bill, sir. Now, please. And Mr. Chairman, I'll show the amendment is 3723. 3723, that's correct. Yes. And uh, one other thing, too, uh, members, uh, our unit motto we had in Germany was send me, and next thing we do, we were in Iraq. Okay. So just be. <laughs> so, uh, House Bill 182. Under current statute, members of the staff of the General Assembly must disclose the Ethics Commission if they are contacted to provide campaign services to candidates for state office. This bill further clarifies when they must disclose campaign services and eliminates a quarterly filing report. It makes it a yearly filing report in and uh, within five, also within five days when they uh, enter into a contract. That's sections one and two. Section three, each year the Ethics Commission is required to provide an annual report to the General Assembly by February 1st. In recent years, the commission has to request a formal deadline extension because the data for the report was not available on February 1st. This bill moves the date for the February 1st 
uh, report to July 1st, which allows the commission additional time to prepare the report without requesting an extension. Section four, excuse me, of the bill clarifies which statutes the Ethics Commission can issue formal advisory opinions on. It also outlines the procedures for the commission must follow to issue an informal advisory opinion. It states that people who, are, who adhere to the requirements provided in a formal advisory opinion or an informal advisory opinion made in writing will not be penalized if, they, if the opinion is later determined to be incorrect. Section five, the Comprehensive Government Ethics Reform Act of 20, uh, excuse me, of 2006 required local government entities to adopt an ethical standard by resolution or local ordinance. This bill requires local government entities to provide the Ethics Commission with the name and contact information of the person responsible for administering and enforcing their ethical standards. And oftentimes this is a county attorney or law director. And what they found over the years, um, a lot of the complaints they receive are local complaints, and this just gives the uh, registry or the commission uh, a contact to refer those folks to if needed. And with that, Mr. Chairman, I renew my motion. Thank you. You've heard the explanation. We have any questions or for the chairman? Seeing none, we're ready to vote on House Bill 182 as amended. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Any opposed? The ayes have it. Sir, you move out to calendar and rules. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Next up, we have House Bill 184 by Chairman Whitson. We have a motion and we have a second, and I believe there's an amendment on that one as well. Yes, Mr. Chairman, that's a technical correction. I show amendment number uh, 3470. That's what we have here, too. Uh, do we want to go? Pardon? I'm showing 3470 on here. Okay. Okay. All right. That's a, it's okay. Uh, we have uh, amendment 3470 to be added to House Bill 184. Uh, is, without objection, we'll go ahead and add the amendment to the bill. Uh, all in favor of adding the amendment, please say aye. aye. Any opposed? The amendment goes on the bill. Now, thank sir, you, Mr. Recognized. Chairman. Uh, thank you. On House Bill 184, and just for members' clarification, remember we have the Bureau of Ethics and Campaign Finance, and under them we have the Tennessee Ethics Commission and the Tennessee Reg Registry of Election Finance, and um, they all work together to ensure that we follow um, our ethical and campaign finance reporting requirements. This bill is intended to simplify certain procedures for the Bureau of Ethics and Campaign Finance. Under current law, the Bureau staff is hired at the recommendation of the executive director with approval from a board of directors. This bill allows the executive director to hire or replace Bureau su support staff without the board approval. The executive director, the assistant director, and the general counsel positions, however, are still required to be hired with board approval. Section two, this bill allows the Bureau to remove uncollected civil penalties from the appropriate register once it has been determined that these penalties cannot be reasonably collected. Excuse me, I got a code. These types of situations will primarily be situations where the individual has died, cannot be found, or where the cost of attaining a judgment outweighs the interests of the state. Current consequences, though, however, for unpaid penalties still apply. If you don't pay off your fines, you cannot run for office. To save the state money, Section 3 allows the Registry and Ethics Commissions to provide notice to filers via, by email. Under current law, the Bureau is required to provide notices via certified mail. And certified mail is coming kind of outdated. It's kind of like sending a telegram, actually, which is costly and time-consuming. All filers must be required to provide an email address to the Registry or Commission. If an email address is not available, the Registry and the Ethics Commission may send notices by first-class mail. And um, with that, Mr. Chairman, I renew my motion. Thank you, Chairman. Any questions for Chairman Whitson? Seeing none, we're voting on House Bill 184 as amended. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? The ayes have it, and I think you're out the calendar and rules. You're out the calendar rules. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman and committee. Thank Thank you. Next up, we have item number 12, House Bill 671 by Representative Johnson. We have, a, we have a motion and a second. 
Representative Johnson, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair and committee. What this bill does um, provides that charitable organizations that provide childcare independent of a religious institution, most of our daycares that are nonprofit or charitable organizations are through churches. They are not required to do audits. They are not required to even uh, worry about the same 9 990 tax forms. However, um, these there's a few there's about a hundred across the state of Tennessee of these organizations that are nonprofits, but um, run these daycares, and they are required to pay approximately ten thousand dollars a year for a private audit. No other child cares um, in across the state are required to do that or have that requirement. And there's a particular one in my district, Little Oaks. They have currently they serve about a hundred kids. They have space there in the um, where the nuns used to live from St. Mary's Hospital. They have a whole extra floor. They could expand 50 to 100 kids if they didn't have the cost of those uh, those private audits that they have because of how they fall under in the Secretary of State. So, what this does is it changes their status so that they don't have to do that private audit. All of the information from a private audit does go on their 990 forms and it is publicly available to anyone who wants to see it. And so what this is going to do is help keep those child cares open. There's not a lot of profit margin when it comes to daycares. We see daycare deserts across the state. This will keep those daycares open that fall into this category and it will allow, allow many of them to expand their seats when they have two, two and three year waiting lists actually. So this bill is going to help keep daycares open. It's going to help them expand so that we know that part of the problem of folks getting back to work is to be able to find the child care that they need. And this one in particular in my district and, and the other one that I know about that's in Knoxville, they work very hard to keep their cost, uh, to keep their, their tuition low. They're one of the few, I think, that has, it's just under $1,000 for a newborn, for a baby. And, and you just don't find that very often. But they want to keep it so that the folks in that community, a working class, solid working class community, are able to send their kids there. So this is just a bill that tries to help those daycares stay open and make sure that if, if we have daycares that ex can expand, they get to expand. Heard the explanation. Uh, questions, uh, Representative Powell. Uh, th thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I just want to say I appreciate you bringing this bill. Um, I hear from a lot of young families and parents um, how um, it can literally be in, they're in desperation trying to find these these you know access to to daycares and child care, um, and the service that these daycares provide is essential. And I know for most, uh, if not all, it's really not profit driven, that the margins are very, very thin. Um, and we expect a lot of these, uh, um, you know, different uh, types of organizations. And, and they literally, I think, are doing the most, some of the most important work in the entire state of Tennessee is to, you know, uh, these parents and guardians place their trust in these daycares every day and um, rely on them to be able to go to work, earn a living and not be concerned. And so anything we can do to try to encourage and build more daycares is essential in the state uh, to help working families. Um, so thank you for this legislation. Hopefully this will make even a small difference is a big difference in so many people's lives. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Next up we have Representative Butler. Uh, I'm curious, who, who is the $10,000 being paid to for this uh, audit? They have to hire an audit, a private auditor to audit the business. Uh, to audit the daycare. They're the only daycare centers across the state are that are required to do that is this group. Follow Rep up. Representative Butler. I'm, a, I'm on the board of a nonprofit and, and we, we get audited and there's the expense is nowhere near $10,000 for those audits. It's in the three or $4,000 range. Well, there's, there's is typically um, at, at least 9,000 is, is what they've got. Okay. And right. and that's typically a little upwards of that. All right. Thank you. Next next up, we have Chairman Powers. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, you mentioned that religious daycare centers are not included in this, and if not, right. why, why are they not included? 
um, because they're exempt and that's what we're doing. We're exempting this group as well. They also exempt hospital groups, you know, firefighter, those kinds of charitable organizations they exempt. Okay. And so um, that's just adds this to the list. There's a list of exemptions. If you'd like, I can read them all, no, that's okay. but um, it just adds them to the list. Okay. Okay. Thank sure. you. Thank you. Mr. Thank you. Any other questions? Questions been called on the bill. All in favor of House Bill 671, please say aye. aye. Any opposed? The ayes have it. You move out to finance ways and means. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Committee. Thank you. Next, we have item number 13, House Bill 1153 by Representative Sherls. We have a motion and a second. Sir, you're, you, I believe you have an amendment. Is that correct? Yes, sir, Chairman. Would you give us that number, please? Uh, amendment is uh, 003785. 3785. And uh, if we could, we'll just go ahead and get that amendment on. We have a motion on the amendment. We have a motion, motion. second on the amendment. So all in favor of adding amendment uh, uh, 3785 to House Bill 1153, please say aye. Aye. And uh, any opposed? The ayes have it. The, you're on your bill as amended, sir. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, this bill was brought to me by our uh, Warren County uh, people there that's asking for uh, building a new National Guard armory there in Warren County. And uh, Major General Terry Max Haston uh, was a leader in the uh, National Guard for a number of years, and they're wanting to add his name onto the building, the new building of the National Guard Armory. All right, you've heard the explanation. Are there any questions for Representative Sherrills? Seeing none, we're voting on House Bill 1153 is amended. All in favor, say aye. aye. Any opposed? The ayes have it. You move on out to finance ways and means, sir. Thank you, Chairman and members. Thank you. Next up, we have item number 14, HJR 58 by Representative Raper. We have, a, we have a motion and a second. Sir, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you for committee for the, the motion and the second. Uh, with a language change, this bill broadens who can solemnize a marriage in, uh, in retirement. Currently, county commissioners, retired mayors, uh, retired state judges, former county clerks, and others can solemnize a marriage during retirement. In TCA... Well, hang on just a second. I believe we're on the wrong one. I think this is HJR 58. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> <You're good. laughs> I'm sorry, I apologize. And uh, would you go ahead and uh, vote on the other one while we're doing that, That's all right. Please continue. Okay. All right. This is a, a bill for veterans and um, health care available to disabled veterans through the Department of Veteran Affairs is considered a benefit and not an entitlement for retired military service people. Uh, I I would like to uh, give all veterans, um, when they have an honorable discharge, I would like to give them uh, the chance to have free medical benefits for life. I have been asked, um, if this is actually passed, do you think the federal government will actually do this? No, I don't. Okay. But uh, my hope is this, that this will be the model for uh, the states all around America, they will catch on to this and then uh, put pressure on the federal government because uh, these are the people that, uh, to me, this is the foundation of America with our veterans. And so I'm asking you to uh, pass this along. It's a joint resolution and pass it along and uh, do what we can to help out our veterans. And I'll open for the questions if Chairman approves. We've, we've heard the explanation. Uh, first up, we have Representative Powell. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just want to commend you. I think this is a very important piece of legislation. Hopefully, um, you know, we'll take a look at this and, um, you know, 
encourage this. My second uh, comment is, uh, I don't know, is this your first bill? No, sir. Yeah, I've I've done several. It appeared like it when I had to go back and uh, uh, so uh, <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> but I started to say you'd already answered my question, but I was just confirming. Thank you. <laughs> Any other? Okay, uh, Chairman Bricken. There we go. Uh, to the sponsor, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, certainly, I fully support all our veterans, and of course, I certainly don't know how many honorable discharge veterans we have in our country. But as much as I like the concept of the bill, I'm kind of concerned that this steps, if it would ever pass the federal government, it just moves the national health care blanket out there. And, and that is a concern of mine. So... I'll just all I'll say. Thank you. Any other comment, yes, please? Uh, may I, may I comment to that one? Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I do understand that. I just think that uh, whatever we can do for our veterans, even if it does move the uh, the needle as far as national health care, uh, we just need to help that group along. And I know there are so many that, uh, that fight and scratch and everything to try to get um, health care. And then uh, uh, one thing I'll mention to you is this, is we have so many with uh, uh, mental uh, issues that uh, this would actually address. Uh, we have a, uh, the suicide rate, we have actually set, we average in 17 suicides a day for our veterans. So uh, just catastrophic. It's awful. So anyway. Thank you. Any other uh, Representative Beck. Yes, sir. I, I, I really like this bill, and I really appreciate you uh, taking the time and the effort uh, to bring it forward. Uh, I also wanted to, there's been several bills up here to uh, pass uh, legal marijuana for uh, veterans with PTSD, and uh, which has been proven very effective. And I hope that uh, we'll be able to work on that issue also but i'm here to support your bill thank you thank you sir any other comment we've got a question on the bill uh we're voting on hjr 58 all in favor please say aye, aye. any opposed the ayes have it you move out sir to calendar and rules thank you chair and committee and i apologize again not a problem Next on the agenda is item number 15, House Bill 145 by Chairman Holtzclaw, and I'm sure the committee will have plenty of questions for Chairman Holtzclaw. <laughs> Thank you, Chairman. <laughs> oh, we need a motion? Motion. Yeah. We got motion and yeah, second, sir. You're, you're recognized. HB 145 is, is a simple bill that's brought to me the Secretary of State. We run it for a couple of years and it extends the, the reduced fees for payable char charities. So it's pretty straightforward and pretty simple. With that, I'll take questions. All right. You've heard the explanation. Is there any questions for Chairman Holtzclaw? Seeing none, we're voting on House Bill 145. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Any opposed? The ayes have it, sir. You move out to finance ways and means. Thank you, Chairman and Committee. Uh, before we uh, before we adjourn, uh, Chair Lady Littleton would like to say something. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Bond Lane's private jet on wheels will be outside of the set on the um, exit on the second floor, and it's a tour. So we'd like for all of you to go out and check it out, and see what it's all about. It is called the Von Lane's Private Jet on Wheels. It's a 22-seat luxury motor coach and will be available for you to tour today. But uh, It's out there till 4 o'clock. Okay. So everybody go check that out. All right. Chairman Karen. Um, I have just uh, if vote for it. a sad announcement to make. Um, I was made aware uh, last night that... Go ahead. I, I was made aware last night that our former representative, uh, Bill Dunn's 
brother, Paul Dunn, uh, passed away unexpectedly. So I'd like for everyone to remember him and his family and their prayers. Very, very close friend, uh, very close family and um, good friends for, for many years. So just wanted to ask you all to please remember that family this week. If there's nothing else, I'll take a motion to adjourn. We are adjourned.